What's up everyone, Solution for the Solution Kicks, back with another video. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and tap, smack, kick, punch that notification button so you know when I'm dropping another one of these things. And you too can be a part of the Mighty Four Kicks Brigade. Yeah, interview time, y'all. All the questions that you all have been dropping down in the comment section, um, and sometimes I get to it, sometimes I forget about it, and people sent me questions on different platforms and things like that. I basically compiled a lot of them and added on a few more just to clarify some things about the channel and myself a little bit. So let's get into it. When did you know you were a sneakerhead? When did I know I was a sneakerhead? I want to say around 2014 is when I started taking it serious. I always had a massive collection of sneakers and um, I didn't see myself as a collector. I just like wanted dope sneakers to have a lot so they wouldn't get beat up and dogged out. And I came from a childhood where I got two pairs of kicks per year. Beginning of school year, and um, normally my birthday, so around spring break, the half of Marvel School would be broke. So, yeah. Full on, 2017 when I started my YouTube channel. It's almost been an anniversary. Yeah, three years, three years. All right, um, how'd you come up with your name? <laughs> Good question. Um, a lot of people say my name sounds like I'm a reseller. I've only resold sneakers once. You know, for the record, Peaked Up City in video, you know what I'm talking about. But it's a play on my DJ name, which is The Solution. And um, it also goes back to way, way, way back on my time in the Army. On my first assignment, my friends called me The Book. So, um, yeah, ask, ask him, he knows he'll have the answers. So. The solution. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your hoodie you have on? Like, are you sending some type of message with this? Oh, the hoodie. Um, child the Air Possible. Nine dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah. As a sneaker YouTuber, you are an influencer. Um, we really want to give people enough information where they can make informed decisions on the sneakers that they purchase. And um, sometimes I don't say, hey, go cop these. I'll say, I like them, they're fire, but I never push people to buy something. I'll give you a reason why you should buy them or not buy them. So indirectly, I am an influencer. That's a good question. Yeah, okay. Um, what was the first sneaker um, you personally purchased? Mm. I think I was 13 and it was the Fila F13V Low suede. With the white letters, not the black ones that they have out now that are suede, and it's some terrible suede on those. Um, the suede was like nice and hairy back then. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, those, and I bought a pair of all black Air Force Ones. I'm from Baltimore, in case you aren't new to the channel. You know, in case you're new to the channel, and uh, all white pair, and a pair of black Cortez. Cortez were popular back then. First of years. Okay. So, like in the late eighties and nineties, um, what was the sneaker culture like growing up in Baltimore? Oh, it was crazy. It was so diverse. Um, you see me on the channel. I talk about Diodore. I'm gonna talk about some some classic brands that aren't really popular anymore, but they're functional, if you will. We had Foot Joy, um, Diodore, uh, Lotto. The removable swoosh thing that people are doing now that came from Lotto. Um, I'm probably forgetting a lot of stuff. Sockney, Spot Built, Converse, the weapons, Pony, even Pony was popping back then. And it was all about your outfit back home. It wasn't necessarily like your kicks of fly. It was like, what about that outfit? And I still do that. I say a lot of people have limited sneakers and they are terrible with their fashion. Yeah. Is that shop <laughs> Shot fire. Shot, shot fire. Okay, you lived all around the world. What was the sneaker culture like in those in, in those countries? Uh, yeah, all around the world, literally. Um, first off, Germany. Uh, you know, Adidas and Puma was popping back then. The shell toes, the the, the Puma suede, the Clyde's. It was like that. It was kind of a b-boy thing uh, for the most part. And then they basically kind of copied what we were doing. But being that I was in the military. Everyone was bringing their flavor from the parts of the country where they're from. So all my my friends from Louisiana, they were rocking um, 
uh, Reebok, they call them soldiers, the classic fitness joints with the gum bottom or the white. I probably throw a picture up there to show people. Um, me being from Baltimore, we had the air, you kind of knew where people were from, from the sneaker vibe, but the locals kind of followed what we did or if they had their own flavor. When I was in um, South Korea, they kind of followed what we did. You know, it still was a lot of b-boy breakdancing type elements in there. Africa, they kind of just wore whatever, or if they had the money, it was um, Air Force Ones and Asics and stuff like that, I saw. Mm -hmm. Not super, super limited sneakers. Um, what was the most memorable sneaker you copped overseas? Oh, I was on vacation. I was on vacation in Rome, Italy, I would say July 2011, and I came across uh, Athlete's Foot in like this little shopping area. And I walked in and I saw a pair of red, white, and blue Nikes. I was like, man, these are dope. And uh, come to find out they were the, the Delta Force joints. Kind of looks like a dunk. And I was deployed. I went back on, on base where I was at. And I was wearing them to the gym, walking around. And this dude walks up to me and says, hey, man, you can take those off. You know, that's a limited, very rare sneaker you got on. And mind y'all, I wasn't into it like that back then. So I was like, for real? And uh, I cleaned them up. The laces were done, so I don't have the original laces in there. So the Delta Force um, Dunk, if you will, was uh, uh, listed on Complex's top 10 sneakers that need to be retro. And I didn't know that. I was beating them up. So, yeah, that's my most um, rare, memorable sneaker that I got. What other brands do you wear and why? Um, like I said, Saucony. Got a lot of Saucony. Um, just to go back from my times in Baltimore. Shout out to my dude, Lucci. He's like... The um, Deodor dude, I wear a lot of Deodor, um, Puma, the RSX series is dope. And you know, I, I stay away from a lot of the waves. You know, a lot of people, the limit, oh, I gotta get those, I gotta get those, whatever's popping on, excuse me, whatever's popping on social media, people go after it. That's not me. What are your grills? I have four. Um, one being the Air Jordan 1 Chicago High. No shout out to my dad. He bought me those. There's a funny story behind it. Too. I just didn't know. I was a kid. I was like eight, nine years old. I didn't want those. I wanted the kangaroos with the zippers. And um, it came with a poster. The the very iconic Jumpman poster of Jordan Duncan at night on the playground. And uh, a wristband. So I wore the wristband to school with the, uh, the Chicago's. I was like, dad, you got the Chicago ones? I'm like, yeah. They got the wristband too. So yeah, those, the Aqua 8s, which I got at a sneaker show, you saw those. Mm -hmm. um, the Laney 5s and the Bread Jordan 1 highs. You know, of course we aren't getting the Chicago's now. Yeah. What's your favorite features um, on sneakers and why? My favorite sneakers, favorite features on sneakers, 3M iridescent. It is something about that reflective and that day glow thing, the light hits it, it makes you look at the shoe real quick. Even though the intent was it for, to be safety, you know, while you're running at night and stuff like that, it was very eye catching. Um, the weak colorway, AKA flax, I like that. So it gives my Timberlands a break, you know, um, Straps and done well. Straps done well. I like those. A lot of people don't like the Air Force One Man. I'm, I'm cool with some of those. But strapping done properly. Gun bottom soles, definitely. Very 80s, 90s thing for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how do you feel about res uh, how do you feel about the resale market and resellers? <laughs> it's a love hate thing. Uh Resellers, um, let's let's have a conversation for a second with the interviewer. I have no real issues with you if you're being fair. I get it. You need to make money, but when you're targeting a certain demographic that's not really aware of how prices work, and um, you're just trying to make a profit because of uh, people's ignorance, and I, I get it. There's willful ignorance where you don't have a desire to know. Then you have um, the reseller element where it's like you you have your place because some people might be far away from malls and, you know, shopping areas where they could cop 
or they, they missed out online. And that's why I kind of say, well, you know, if you can shop online, why do you need a reseller? But you know, people pay for the convenience fee. Like you need a roll of toilet paper right now. <laughs> and the gas station is right there. Uh-huh. You're gonna pay that $2.49 for that roll of scotch versus driving all the way down to Walmart, right? Uh-huh. So you're paying the convenience fee. So I, I get it, resellers. Y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm on your head with it, but I get it because I have sold a pair. And it turned out rather well. Yeah, love hate. Love hate. <laughs> okay, there appears to be an issue between the old school and the new school in sneaker culture. Do you agree and why? Yes. It, it is rare this ugly head recently. I had an exchange with the um, brief exchange with a pretty popular um, large subscriber set sneaker YouTuber. Um, shout out to you. you. If you're watching this, you know I'm talking about you. I'm not going to say your name because people are kind of tied to something negative. But no, it was a good exchange. My thing is with the new school, and it's kind of a generational thing. My generation, we wanted to have those conversations with the older men and women that were doing the things that we're doing now because we're like, we don't want to make mistakes. And they were like, we don't want you to make the mistakes we made. So the exchange of um, you know, they, well, not exchange, it's basically educating you, if you will, where sometimes that's a negative connotation, like, I need to teach you, but it's all in how you approach it. I'm not like, hey, shut up and listen to me because you're young. You don't know what you're talking about. I lived through this, so you need to shut up and listen, kiss the ring. It's nothing like that. So the the ones in the younger generation, like, hey, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, your approach to the culture, you know, tell me some stuff. Tell me some stuff. But then you have the the element that kind of comes from the way hip hop is right now, where it's like, you can't be this age doing these things. It doesn't look right. Well, I'm talking to you right now. The goal is to reach my age, to get this gray hair, to lose some hair if you do, um, to age in the face and things like that, and be able to talk about it. So you could tell the youth that's coming behind you, this is how it was. Don't make the mistakes I made. So, Generational gap. Pick one. Drop boxes or racks? Oh. I'm going to go with racks. Why? It, it saves you money and space. It's practical. Uh, I, I have the rack system. Y'all, y'all know me from having a rack system. And um, you could get so many pairs on there for such a cheaper price. I think one rack that I have, y'all know I have the chrome rack system. I think I can put 60 pairs on there with my foot size versus $60. 60 pairs, and you get six in a box of drop fronts, is gonna be pretty pricey. So it's a, a price type thing that's going on in space. Um, but the drop front boxes, they, they look super neat. I like them. I do have some, I do. So I'm not bashing that at all. Um, If you transition to drop fronts, you got to think about space. If you, like, I want to keep my boxes. What are you going to do with the boxes? So you have to figure that out if you go the drop front route. So it's it's a matter of preference, but I I like the racks. But I do, I have both, okay? So I'm kind of on the fence. And um, my my drop box plug, I'm talking to you, man. Holler at me. Don't make me come find you. I, I know where you work. I'm gonna run up on you. Okay, back to the end. Why hasn't your YouTube channel taken off after three years in the game? <sighs> Good question. Oh, I get this from time to time. And one, it's a compliment. And two, it's a stark reminder to me that I have not done some things. And it's my fault. It's not that the, the sneaker culture doesn't like what I do because it's been proven that people really respect in what I do. Um, shout out to Q the Queen for telling me don't leave Sneaker YouTube because I almost left. I did. I almost left y'all. I did twice. Um, and it wasn't like growth. I just felt like I didn't fit in what I was doing. Because Sneaker YouTube is predominantly 12 to 25. I'm way beyond that. Those are my kids almost. You're 25, I could be your young father. So um, there's a chasm where I don't appeal to a certain demographic. And I looked at my analytics. More younger kids are gravitating towards me, though. I don't, 
know what's up with that. I haven't changed anything at all. I still do the same stuff, but it's me not putting content out every day. Um, I'll take a week or two off. You know that. You know, mm-hmm. like, I'm just not feeling it. I, I look at my um, my videos as kind of like art. If I don't feel it, why am I paying? It? It's gonna look bad. So if I'm inspired, I drop. And um, some people are like you gotta drop that content, man. And um, I'll have a video because it's not views. Uh, it's not like that. Nobody's watching this. It just doesn't appeal to a certain demographic. I have a video that'll do three thousand views, and my next video, same energy, same approach, two fifty. Happens. Yeah. Yeah. So it's me. I have held back my channel. What? What's your issue with Yeezys? <laughs> Yeezys. The Adidas Yeezys aren't. Well, the Adidas Yeezys aren't aesthetically pleasing to me. They look like elf shoes. But the 700s, like the Wave Runners, I, those are kind of all right. You know, because I'm into the chunky soul, you know. And I, I like that. The Nike Yeezys are adult. I actually had a pair of the Air Max Nike, which I sold. Shout out to Sean Marcelli. Appreciate you. Um, just don't like how they look. And if you take his name off those, people would buy. Prove that. It's all about hype and collaborations. You feature a lot of GRs on your channel. Why? Because they're there and I can buy them. <laughs> <laughs> I like what I like. And generally, they're readily available. GR. Um, but it, it goes back to uh, where I came from in the culture. We, we didn't have these limited releases that had to go certain places. And certain stores got them and certain stores didn't. So you went to the store that had them. So I don't chase uh, limited shoes and like, oh, your, your, um, your, your collection is whack. You got nothing but GRs. It's your money. People that have a problem with um, sneaker heads will cop GRs, if you will. They're so concerned about that. Buy them some limited sneakers. If not, Sierra La Boca. They may live bush. All right, shut your pile. Next question. Why are you so easily able to address provocative issues in the culture with no backlash towards your channel? It's all in your approach. There, there are going to be some issues that are very provocative, cutting edge. Um, a little sensitive to some people. And um, if you don't have the ability to, the gift of gab, if you will, to run straight down the middle with it and not side with people, because that's what a lot of people want. They want you to click up with some issues and things like that. I, I just, the saying goes, I don't make the news, I just report it. You know, and I'm classically trained in that. So, you know, I was on air. I'm not allowed to take sides when I'm on air. I'm unbiased. So, once you do that and um, your vocabulary is where it should be in life, people don't come at you. Because stupidity and ignorance is no match for intellects. Hands down. You want to beat them every time. No, no matter how many people subscribe to you or how many subscribe to them. Your, your points are mute because you're emotional, you're yelling and stuff like that. And you know, you can't, you got to present those talking points in a a concise and educated manner. So people tend not to come after me for that. And most of the time I stay away from it, period. There's nothing for your channel, by the way. It's limited. Thank you. (laughs) Okay. I have two more questions for you. Okay. First question. Um, Do you see yourself still being a sneakerhead in the future, like five, 10 years from now? Yeah. 20 years from now. Okay. As, as long as he's attached to my body, why not? Um, shout out to the, the older gentleman and his wife. They they got some heat. Uh, I can't remember his name. It slips in my I see him all the time on social media posting stuff. And it, it doesn't look odd. You know, sometimes you see older gentlemen. You ever been to the, the lounge? Mm-hmm. And you see that one older gentleman dressed too young? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can still pull it off it still have your your clothing look the way it should on you. You know, that's the thing. I, I would say cop the sneakers, but fashion is 
very faddish from time to time, it doesn't look right on you. You know, so yeah, why not? It's, that's your hobby, that's your love. That's the whole ageism thing, you know? Who says there's an age limit on this? So why? Shout out to Jumpman Bossy. That's the, the sneaker godfather right there. Still in his 50s doing it. The man has a museum. Nothing but respect to him. I wanna be like that. Also, um, my older OG, uh, Mr. B, here in the greater San Antonio area. Insane collection. What are these um, you're rocking today? What? <laughs> oh. Oh, these right here. These are the Sasquatch Fives right here. <laughs> these are limited. Um, I'm working on the collaboration with the brand. And uh, these are the Fur Flex right here. You, you got to get yourself prepared for the winter. Or even just around the house and everything. Super comfortable. You know, you got that um, that nice fur on top of there. Brown toes. You know, please watch the camera. <laughs> yeah. We're killing that on foot right there. Tell me what you know about this. Tell me what you know about that. Yeah. Any more questions about these? You want I a pair? Know. I can get you a pair. Oh, I'm, I thank you. you sure. No, thank you. I'm, yeah, I'm okay. positive. Fire. I just want to thank you for sitting down with me, um, having this interview with me, and for answering, you know, questions to all the subscribers. I appreciate you. Thanks for asking these questions. And I have a question for you. Are you a sneakerhead? Uh, I call myself maybe a, a baby sneakerhead. A baby. <laughs> Based um, on how many pairs? Um, I probably have about... Maybe close to a hundred sneakers, you think? You don't consider yourself. That's a baby sneaker? That's a baby sneaker. For you? Yes. So what, what's your most rare, hype, dope sneaker in your opinion, in your collection? Oh my goodness, there's so many to choose from. Uh, <laughs> I can't pick a favorite, like, I don't, it's just, it's so many. Um, I don't know if I should say the, the breads that I just got. They're just yeah, nice. that works. That works. A lot of women went after that shoe. And my um my Chicago Jordan ones, Lowe's. I don't have those. And I was surprised with the, the sparkly one. <laughs> sparkly one. The um The little, the black and gold. That's why I call myself a baby sneaker head. Like I know what half of my shoes, so I just know they look good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You don't quite know the names or nicknames that that would make you a baby sneaker head. Black, the the lows. The, the ones that you um you redid yours in black. Oh, the heiress. Yes, the heiress. The heiress, the um the Jordan Eleven heiress. I love them. You asked for those, right? I didn't ask for them. I, they were they were like the um, I, I don't think I. Asked it was a them. surprise. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Okay. They were surprised um, because we couldn't get the UNC, so they were. We just got those. That's a nice consolation. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What? So that's that's three. Mm -hmm. That's two. That was two. That was two. So the UNC six is you wanted. You got the heiress instead of some were shot by those. Uh -huh. And what's the shoe you asked for that you got? Oh, no. Um. <laughs> it's a heck of a guy. Isn't he? He's a wonderful, I must say. Man. Man. It's a heck of a dude right there. You ask for a shoe and you get it. It's be nice. For the most part, huh? Yeah. I mean, that could be just like, seriously, like, that's like any shoe in my closet, like. It is. It is. So what's the dope shoe you bought him? Oh man, too many. Too many? <laughs> Enough. Enough. Um, let's see. She couldn't oh, even name one. I know. That he got her. <laughs> <laughs> I know the um, black and yellow ones, the uh, the new loves. Those are the ones I wanted. Yes, the new love me. 
You remember the ones I'm talking about? Yeah, the, the black and yellow you love me. A, a sneaker that people slept on and they, they suddenly just, poof, when the hype got a hold of them. But people don't like mids. That shoe, that mid sold out. I love those. Yeah, that's that's dope. That's dope. So do you do you think um like being a sneakerhead is an addiction? I wouldn't call it an addiction. I mean, shopping is an addiction. It's still shopping. Like you find yourself like I gotta get those. I gotta get them. Oh man, you got any more of them jeans? I don't call it an. I don't think it's an addiction. But I'm out of here. I appreciate the interviewer who's off camera Thank for you. sharing and also pulling this information out of me as well. I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time and I owe it to you all as subscribers. Remember, comment, like, subscribe, tap the notification buttons so you know when I'm dropping other these things and you too can be a part of the Mighty Four Kicks per game. Like I always say, it's not about how much you pay for this movie. That's why you pay that much. But I'm out of here. Boom. Don't you ever <laughs> put me on. That's, that's for the culture. That's funny. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's back up.